Okay, so um, we're going to do or talk about the concepts behind um, what limits are. So what is a limit? In general, a limit is kind of a kind of an assumption, right? It's a blind assumption based on data around a point. So, um, for example, you know, if I have, you know, a normal type of function, okay? So let's say a parabola. You know, if I was, if I asked, you know, if I, if, if I wanted to know, like, okay, oops, sorry, you know, what, what's the limit right here? You know, well, I'm not looking at this point. Don't look at it. You look around it. Right? Assume that all you have is this big hole. You know, you you are assuming that you have all the information except for that. Okay? You don't you don't have this. You know, it's like unknown. Well, the limit is what you would think would go there. You know, based on this, you know, if I asked you, okay, what? What should what should go there? If you can, you know, pretty much say like, well, it makes sense that you know everything exists, everything looks like it's connected. This should go there. You know? Then that's the limit. That's what it is. The limit is just that value. Um, so for most functions that aren't strange, which we will see plenty of strange ones, for most functions you just figure out what the value of the data or value of the function is there. That's all you have to do. Now that's not the case for everyone. But generally, that's true, right? Most functions behave very normally. This function does, right? It's predictable throughout the whole thing. That's normal. You know, that's not always true, though. So really, you're, the fact that this point exists has nothing to do with um, a limit at all. It has nothing to do with it. What, it, what, you need to, what you need to focus on is if you didn't know what was there, if you didn't know, what would you expect to be there? there could, it could be empty. Right, that point could be empty, but based on what's going around it, you would expect it to be this. Now, just because this point's down here doesn't mean you're wrong, right? It's just a prediction, right? It has nothing to do with being right or wrong about that point existing. It's only a prediction of what logically should go there if this was a normal function. Okay, hopefully you can kind of grasp that concept. It does not matter that this point is down here. You're not wrong because the limit, you know, the limit is this point right here, even if it doesn't exist. It doesn't matter. Okay, so really it's just a prediction based on the history of before and after, and not has nothing to do with what it actually is. Just a just an assumption that you would have if you didn't know about it. Um, okay, so now most of the time limits exist, and they are just easily predicted, right? Now there are times when limits don't exist. So limits not existing and there are mainly three cases that you will see case one we have um, they differ from left to right so can't predict so give me I'll show you an example of that So again, these are going to look like bizarre functions to you because you quite haven't really seen them before. But let's say if I had a function that was something like this, but then my the rest of it was like was like this. Now you don't normally see functions like this, but what if you did? Now the limit is going to exist everywhere except for one place, and it's the place that I cannot predict based on the history of before and after that point, what it should be. Could you imagine where this point is? Yeah, it's right here, right? It's just right in the middle. The other parts are predictable. It's just right there, you have goofy stuff going on. From one side, it looks like you're going to a positive number, and on the other side, it looks like you are coming from a negative number. Now, be at that place, exact th at this point, looks like on the y-axis, um, you seem to not be predictable. Okay, um, the second way that a limit will not exist is if it's unbounded. 
now. And that means, you know, negative infinity or infinity. So the, the, you're going to one of those numbers. So let me give you an example of that. So if um, I said, if I had a graph that looked like this. Okay. Now, we said in this first example, it differs from left and right. Well, if I look at this point here, okay, they're not really differing from left and right. They seem to be approaching the same point. However, that's why we have this condition, right? It can't be unbounded, right? We can't just be going to negative infinity and infinity. It's got to be going to a real number. Um, so in this case, when we're even though they're going to the same place from left and right, or one's going to a negative, the other one's coming from, technically, um, but because it's unbounded, because we don't have an actual number, um, then it's not going to exist. And then our last example is going to be if it's oscillating um, between points that are around a number that we can't figure out. So this is, um, uh, I can't spell, oscillating. Okay, so for this, um, this is going to be more with trig because it's periodic in nature. Um, and I don't really know a ton of examples for this, um, but I will give it a go. Um, if you were like looking at zero, let's say, let's say I just have some crazy stuff going on, right? And I can't like pinpoint where this point is going to be, right? I know that my my graph is between a certain numbers, but I can't really tell because there's so much activity going on that when I when you get around zero, especially when you do something like you know when you have a one over x, um, you have these, these answers become close to infinity around zero, kind of like in this case, right? Where in this case, right, we're diving towards negative infinity as our number goes to zero, just like in that this number gets very, very large or small, depending on if it's positive or negative, if um, we get closer to zero. Now with sine, we're, we're kind of bounded, even though we're bounded between zero and one, we still have a very hard time identifying which angles are going on. So, but anyway, there are three ways that a limit cannot exist, mainly, and that's either they differ from left to right, they, they can be the same from left to right, but if they're going to be unbounded, then it doesn't work. And then finally, if it's oscillating, which that's a rare occurrence, but you will see it.